Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. So today I want to talk a little bit about Phase 3's um, sort of endgame and how you win uh, a little bit. So it's about the trojite mining and that kind of thing, so be kind of fun. So, to win in Phase 3, unlike in Phase uh, 2, you are based on rating points instead of occupancy. So we go to rating criteria here. We can see that the rating criteria for uh, lag range conqueror, that's where you control the lag range. In phase two, you would need 40% occupancy and a lag range gate. In here, we have no occupancy at all. You have to control the lag range gate though. And your union rating points are greater or equal to a thousand and you rank first. Ranking first is within, if you check the rating points, you can see who's first here. So if you control the lag range gate and a first, you will get the top reward, the rating criteria one. Second, if you control the gate and so on and so forth for third and fourth. There is also Galaxy Dominator. This is very much the same thing, but instead, if you don't control the lag range gate, but you rank first within the rating points, you will get first within Dominator and second and so on and so forth. And it's all depending on rating points. Our rating points are gathered by delivering Trojite. Trojite mining is pretty simple. If you zoom out on a little bit so you can see with this little thing box checked up here, you can see all these mining locations they are in green. If we move around a bit, we can find a red one. Now. They are slightly different to uh, bases. Uh, I believe there is an enemy base here. It's just not spawning in for some reason. There we go. Now we should see it. So you can see here, this is an enemy uh, base. This is a trade outpost, a uh, pirate base and that sort of thing. And you can see here, this is kind of like a um, washed out red sort of color and it's solid. Whereas this has got like a square border around it. So if you look for these on the map, you will find these Trojite Crystal Zones. Something to note as well though is they do appear within standard asteroids as well. For example, if we look at this, uh, that's parked next to my base, Crystal Asteroid Belt containing Trojite Crystals, and we can see there there's a reserve of 300k. Uh, this is at level 6, so that's probably the most you'll ever find within these type of um, asteroids. If you find um, I did have one here, but I've mined that out and it had like nothing. It had like 300 uh, Trojite and this is a level two. I think it was about 300 Trojite. But yeah, that, that disappeared very, very rapidly. Once you get enough, uh, it's 10,000 Trojite and it takes a long time to mine that, um, like a pretty long time. You need to find a city. And you see on this city, we can see that there's a red plus made of squares similar to the trading outposts if we zoom in we can see here that there's a trojite crystal terminal terminal and can receive trojite crystals so these are the cities that are going to be very important within phase three controlling these are going to allow your guys that are delivering to warp to them and drop them off it also gives a little bit of a um Benefit to keeping, say, the AC721s, the generic ones that have the larger cargo capacity um, around, even in the late game when you got large miners out, you might have got rid of them by them previously, but keeping them around now, because they got that high cargo capacity, you can fit more into them, you can have a smaller fleet of them, so they're not eating into your military CP. So interesting to see that some of these ships that you normally get rid of later on, you might keep around. Do bear in mind that all ships do have some capacity of some nature, so that's not 100%, you know, spot on. You might get rid of the AC721s in favour of a more combat efficient fleet and just deal with the fact that you can't carry as much cargo. So again, at 10,000 uh, Trojite, you can click this button and you can hit transport. 
Now, if you do not control the city or you have no way of warping to the city within a you know short location, say you've got an outpost here, or you've sent a scout over here and he's um, given you a warp point, you will uh, slow fly the entire way there. It's very important that if you find a nice city that you're going to go, ah, we're going to try and keep that one for the Union, grab hold of it sooner rather than later, get our post set up and stuff so you've got warp points for your delivery fleet. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to take a long, long time. Something extra to note as well, though, is bases. Before, if you kill the base, bar the experience you get for killing the fleet and the base, etc., and you got nothing. Now, though, if a base is destroyed and it has trogite held into it, so we go into my base here, you can see that I have a, a bit of trogite, only 1,000. Like I said, you don't get a lot mining uh, from these asteroids, and I haven't personally mined the big trogite-specific asteroids. Uh, you will lose all your trogite. The enemy fleet that attacked you will take a portion of that uh, Trogite, or well, they'll take all of it, but if there's multiple attackers, I think it's split between them. And uh, yeah, so you lose all your Trogite that you've so usefully mined. So do bear that in mind. If you are getting up to 10k, you may want to deliver, uh, or you may lose it. Very simple as. So there is a reason now, more so than ever, to actually attack enemy bases and take them out of the fight. Um, it's interesting dynamic and it's due to the fact that because occupancy doesn't matter anymore i don't know if people are going to care about occupancy and trying to span out and grab entire regions or if they'll just try and grab the cities they want and just control single points try and grab that lag range gate so you can get the uh, conqueror status so yeah lag range conqueror you need 1000 rating points 10,000 trogite is one rating point, which means if you're doing this solo, you need to do that a thousand times. However, if you are in a hundred man union and you are we're all working together, that's only 10 uh, runs each of 10K, completely doable and fairly easy. But obviously, if you've got very competitive unions uh, that are within the game, you're gonna be uh, fighting with them a bit. So this might become more difficult as time progresses. There are also these Union Prestige points occupy the region where the Stargate is located. The Union rating points greater than 1,000. Rewards. Union Prestige points are distributed according to the proportion of the Union's rating points in the total ones of all Unions, including Galactic Factions. Two Union Prestige points for every 1% of the total rating points and additional 40 Union Prestige points for occupying the Stargate. I have not got a clue what Union Prestige points are. I've um, sent a message to the devs asking they have not get back to me. So I can't really comment too much on this. It sort of sounds like it might be some other reward type as well as Dawn points, or they may have accidentally renamed these Prestige points instead of Dawn points. So we're not entirely sure what's going on there. So they could be some form of extra reward that you get towards the end. Glory Pioneer, same as always, unlock all zones in the base, so nothing to worry about there. And again, like I said, you are dropping the 50% uh, occupancy from Phase 2, and you're getting gain as many rating points as possible to rank first. So if you get a 1,000 and you're ranking first, you will get the 800 Dawn points for Dominator. Conqueror is the same, but you need to control the Light Range Gate as well. And like I said, rating points, 10,000 trogite is one rating point. So you need a thousand, so you'd have to do it a thousand times or 10 times for a hundred man union all working together. So there you go, that's about it. Just quickly though, there is a giveaway going on. Uh, I am not hosting this one. This is all on Good Gamey and the guys over at Infinite Lagrange, the devs. Uh, and it's $250 for the most creative content creators in Infinite Lagrange. Have you made it to the new star system for Trojite Crystals? Share your most memorable battles, creative stories, sceneries, and other original exciting content in video or streaming to win awards. Also share this post and follow us to receive a lucky rewards of $10. Uh, they'll be randomly picked, I believe. Um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna have a link to this down below. I believe this is gonna be on Facebook. Uh, so I will drop a link down below uh, when I get hold of that link and you can go have a look. So the first place prize is $80. There are two second place prizes of $45 each and three $20 prizes for third place. And there are two lucky sharing post rewards of $10. So you are welcome to upload more than one video to your channel. Please know that the only best ones will receive the reward. The views is 30%, likes 20%, and creative content's 50%. So even if you don't get the most views or the most likes, but you have a uh, interesting and fun content, you still get a 50% is uh, allocated to that and how they measure that, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, just a note, YouTubers uh, do have, such as myself, do have the opportunity to enter this contest. I personally am not going to. I believe that it'd be unfair for YouTubers that already have um, an idea of video creation and that sort of stuff to compete. Uh, they can enter, but we are heavily, heavily um, sort of handicapped uh, i believe we only get something like 50 percent of our views count and uh, like no likes count and our creative content is reduced as well so we we can't ever basically win here so there is that again i'm not going to personally participate i'm pretty certain that you'll find that the other uh, youtubers will probably not participate either in this the ones that are already already established within the infinite lagrange community uh will probably hold back on this i again i'm personally not going to so yeah there you go there's your chance of uh becoming a content creator like myself and getting a bit of cash for it so yeah not bad and you never know if the video does really, really well, maybe uh, Good Gamey will sign you on for a contract, and there you go. The start of your YouTube career could be near. So yeah, links for that will be down in the description below, and have a good one, guys. I hope you find this useful, and you can see the difference between phase two and phase three of the um, you know the end game the win condition for your union and how to acquire it again it's quite simple 10,000 trojai equals one rating point you need a thousand rating points or more depending on how all the unions are doing maybe you know they've got a thousand two hundred rating points here you won that first place you're gonna have to beat them within rating points so starting out early might be a good way to go here. Again, it could be a better way to wait till late game than rush into a wall with them, try and stop them making those deliveries, knocking out their bases, stealing their trojite, and, you know, trying it that way. We'll have to see. It looks like there are limited amounts of trojite, just to note quickly as well. Um, so, yeah, you may see something going on there that you know they've run out of trojai they've seen enemy bases still have some so you're attacking those bases to try and get the trojai off your enemy and that kind of thing so we'll have to see how the dynamic of this server works i will update you as uh we get deeper into the server uh, there has been no wars on my server currently because the occupancy doesn't seem to matter anywhere near as much as it did before Obviously, it matters to an extent. If you want a lag range conqueror, you're going to have to get the lag range, and you have no idea where that's going to spawn. So, there is that. Anyway, guys, like I mentioned earlier, I hope you've enjoyed this video, found it informative, and I'll catch you guys next time.